Hi everyone and welcome to Asta's Place. I have been making moss balls, big moss balls with plants in them and little moss balls and this I'm going to put into my terrarium and that is what we are going to do today. I know I've made terrariums in the past but I haven't made one that's got beautiful little mossy plants and, and all of the plants that live together. I absolutely love these and once you've got them, as long as you look after them, they will go on and on and on for such a long time. Now, I'll be back in a minute and I'm gonna have all my materials together. I'm gonna to show you how quick and easy they are to put together. Ta -da! I've got all of the stuff that we need to make the perfect terrarium. Fishbowl or whatever vessel you're going to use. Make sure it's clean before you start. The next thing is, well this is what I do, is to layer in some stones. Stones are for drainage. And the other thing is that some of the terrariums that you see, they'll have like layer of stones and a layer of carbon and everything's all layered up. Well, I can't be bothered with that because with the plants that I'm going to put into here, I want to represent a little bit of our beautiful bush here in New Zealand. And because I just love it, you know, and so that's what I want to do. So this isn't the hard and fast method, but it's a method that's going to do me for now. Okay, so quite a few stones in there. They can all go down into there. Oops, and remove anything that should not be in there that is a foreign body at this stage. In fact, I'm going to use all of those. Why not? Put those into there like so. Wipe my hand. Now the next thing that has to go into here is a layer of uh, charcoal. Now the charcoal is to filter and keep everything all neat and tidy. You can buy this from places where you get fish, you know, like aquarium shops or the other thing that I do is I've got this stuff here and this is broken up charcoal that you use on your barbecue you can put that into there as well and as I said this is to keep everything all nice and sweet and clean and to stop, stop everything getting all sour in here now make sure that everything's all neat and tidy before you go any further and if there's anything on muck on the outside of your vase your glass Contain it as you're going, just give that a wee wipe. Right, from there the next thing to put into here is a little bit of peat. Now the reason you put the peat in is because that's going to hold the water. And the other thing that I've got mixed in with that is a little bit of orchid mix which has got quite a bit of bark on. You'll see this here has got a little bit of bark. Use that bark into there. Now, it doesn't have to be like all perfect. It can be up and down as you like it. And I just think that I might put a little bit more of that into there. Now I've also mixed in a little bit of potting soil. Now do be very careful if you've got any issues, like lung issues with the potting soil, just to open it up first and just leave it until um, it's had 24 hours to breathe and any microbes that are in there have had time to just dissipate. Okay, filling that up to about there, getting rid of that. Oh, now I think the cat, what are you doing Tilly? Okay, now the next thing to do is to put in any kind of formation that you want, like big rocks or anything like that. This one I'm using because it's got a lovely little bit of, through here you can see it's got that lovely bit of moss in there. I'm gonna put that down and in over to there. Right, I've got a collection of little plants. I've got a lovely little fern here. I'm going to put that down and into there just like so, gently place that into there. And what the other thing I've done is, um, I plant my little seedlings in little jiffy pots, which, oh no, you can't see it in there, but you can buy these little jiffy pots. They're about that round and like a little disc and they're peat moss and what you can do is soak those and then put your little seedlings in and then just take those straight through. Right, we'll put that into there like so. It doesn't matter where you plant them, any old way. And now I've got these lovely, lovely, lovely little palms. Look at those, aren't they cute? My palm trees out the back have all taken to fruiting, so I've got a million little red, little beady berries all over the place and I just catch those and put those into the, the little jiffy pots and off they grow. Right, that can go into there like so, being careful of its little roots and I might just put a little bit more in there to get that to sit up at this stage. Right, I, over here I've got some lovely little bits of moss. I'm going to put a bit of moss down into there like so and I'll put another bit over there just to, so, and that moss, the lovely thing about that moss from where I've got it on that rock, that will all grow around. Oh, it'll be so sweet. Now, I've also got some lovely little baby tears and underneath here where I pulled it out of the garden, it's got lots 
lots and lots and lots of lovely soil that can go into there like that. Oh, look at that, that's starting to come together quite nicely. Now I've got some other moss over here. It's all a bit sort of yucky at the moment because it's been quite wet here. So that, I'm going to bring that and put that over there so that you've got this varying amounts of lovely, lovely moss and textures into there. Right, the next thing to do is, I've got this here, now I can't remember what this is called, but this actually grows into like a little mound, and you have, I have them in the garden as well out the back, and they're like representing my wee forest. So those there can just all be, just put it, I just pull them off, and then that can go down into there, and with the moisture in there, that'll all sort of like puff up and can be very beautiful. Right, the last thing I want to put into there is my little baby moss ball, and the great thing about this is that all of those little baby tears there are all just kind of cover that whole area of that little moss ball, and that can just go in over there. Now the other thing that you need to remember is not too much water, and also these little plants in here are going to have their own little environment where it's going to be quite warm. They don't like being in direct sunlight, just if anything that grows in the environment, well all of these materials that I've used all grow in the same environment, so they all will have, or cohabitate quite nicely together, so they'll all require the same amount of moisture and what will happen in due course is that little palm will just grow up into here and these will just fill out and that will be a little bit of outside coming inside that will last for a long long time. I hope you enjoy that because I just really love these. Thanks for watching and I'll see you another day. Mm -hmm.